Hello everyone. Hope you're uh, good today. Going to continue on with our study through the Bible. I wouldn't call it a study. I'm not smart enough to lead a study. So we'll call it my uh, takes. <laughs> for, better, for lack of a better term. So we come, last time we were talking about Abram. And we come to this part of Abram's story where he was dwelling in the land that God had promised him, although he owned none of it. But he was staying there. And we saw that, you know, Abram split up between him and Lot, and Lot went toward the plain of Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, we start off with this chapter that tells about a revolt in that land. These people had worked for a ruler for 12 years, and on the 13th year, they revolted against their master, for lack of a better term, the ruler of the land, and had an uprising. And during this uprising, they had taken Lot and all of his possessions. Well, once Abram got word of that, he gathered up his men, and it says they strategically attacked in the dead of night, he split his men up. They surrounded the enemy. They overtook them. And they rescued Lot and all of his possessions. And along with that, they got all the possessions of all the other kings in the land that the raiders had taken. Now, I find that strange that Abram was such a good military tactician, so to speak because I haven't read anywhere up to this point where he received any military training or was even in another battle. So that just shows me the provision of our Lord. He was with Abram through this battle, as we're fixing to see here in just a minute when we get to the start of the next chapter. And so then we have this encounter with Melchizedek, who is a king of Salem, and we're also told is a high priest, which is a bit of an odd thing because there was no established church at this time. Now we can read about Melchizedek and how he was a pre-incarnate Jesus Christ and lots of other things. I won't get into that because quite frankly, I'm not smart enough to know that. God will reveal that to me in due time, I guess. But anyway, in this encounter, it says that he blessed the God Most High, El Elon, El Elon, which is God Most High. And they did, and Abram did a, an odd thing here. He gave a tithe, a tenth of what he had in his possession. There was no formal church that we know of, but still, God, uh, still Abram through the conviction of God, I'm sure, said, I'm going to give a tenth. He didn't need a written word. He didn't need a preacher to tell him to do it. He just did it because he realized it was the right thing to do. God had put that on his heart. And after this, some of the kings were so grateful that they wanted to give Abram some of what he had recovered for him. But he made the statement, no, I only want what my men have already eaten of yours, and I don't want anything of yours. Because then people can say the king of this country made, gave Abram his wealth, or the king of that country gave Abram his wealth. He wasn't doing that to be insulting. He was doing that because he wanted everyone to know where his wealth came from. It comes from the God Most High, El Elyon, God Almighty, Yahweh, nowhere else. Everything he had, he realized, came from God. So we come over to the next chapter, and God tells Abram, look, I will be your shield and your great blessing. God is telling Abram, look, don't be afraid. I am going to be your strong and mighty shield. I will protect you wherever you go. Now 
Now that's quite a promise. But what God is telling Abram and what he tells us is, I'm not going to send you anywhere where I'm not going to protect you, where I'm not going to be with you. That doesn't mean sometimes that harm won't come to us in one fashion or another. But what it means is that the things that matter, I'm protecting those, which is my relationship with you. I'm going to be there and nothing is going to break it. And as he says this and when he finishes, Abram does something that that really is, you know, a lot of people would think it's out of line, but it's really not. He asked God a question about his promise. He says, you promised me all of these descendants, but yet here I am and I still have none. And God patiently tells him, step outside and look up in the sky. And he does, and he sees all the stars, and God says, as numerous as these stars are, is how many descendants you will have. And it says in the Bible that Abram believed and God counted it, counted that to him to righteousness. Not that Abram had done everything perfect, not that he had worked his way to it. It says he believed what God told him. He believed God's promise. And God counted to him as righteous. That's where we can mess it up sometimes. I can mess it up sometimes. I can think that I've got to do this or I've got to do that for God to be pleased. But when it's all said and done, God has accepted me for who I am. Now, yes, I want to do things to please him because I love him and I'm grateful for what he's done. But the things I do do not count it to me as righteousness. What counts to me as my righteousness is that I accept that I could not atone for my sins and that Jesus Christ did that on the cross. And not just saying that I believe. You know, Abram could have said that he believed but lived his life a different way. No, God knows the heart. And if I say something and I don't mean it, God knows it. He knows every fiber of my being. So at that moment, it was counted to Abram as righteous. And God tells Abram to take some animals, some a, cat, a heifer, and I believe a goat. Don't hold me to the animals. And he says, cut them in half. Now, this was a custom of this time that when two people made an oath to each other or made a covenant, that they would cut the animals in half and each of them would walk through the animals. And what they were saying is that if I don't keep my covenant, then you should treat me just as you did this animal. Cut me in half. Abram does this. And it says he went into a deep sleep. He had a vision. And in his vision, he saw objects which represented God going through the split animals. God made a covenant with Abram at that point that said, I'm going to keep what I said I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep my promises. We notice here, if you'll look, he didn't make Abram walk through the split animals, just the imagery of God Almighty. And what that says to me, God will keep his covenant. And he knows that Kevin can't keep his part. He didn't make Kevin walk through the split animals. He knows I'm not going to be faithful. Does that mean I just quit trying? Absolutely not. As Paul said, you know, does that mean the commandments are useless? God forbid is his words. And that's my words. God forbid. I'm still striving to please the Father. But it's not to earn my righteousness. It's not to fulfill my end of the covenant because I can't. It's to please him because I love him. That's the only reason. If I'm doing it for any other reason, then I'm kidding myself. I cannot stay faithful to God. I will sin. I will fall. I will lose interest. You know, I've... I've not that I've lost interest, but you go through seasons when you're engaged and when you're not engaged. 
But what God is saying to me, because I've been going through a little bit of a lull here and been a little bit disengaged, and it's affected my attitude, it's affected my how I feel. But what God says to me is that even though you, Kevin, have let your fire burn down a little bit, mine is burning just as hot and as high as it ever was. And I will keep my promises to you. I will not lose you. You're, you know, it's what he says to me and he says to you, I will be your great and mighty shield and your blessing. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when you're not communicating, you're not having time with me. I'm going to be there and I'm not going anywhere. What an encouraging promise that is from our Heavenly Father. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's always going to be there, even when we mess it up. And I am just like the people that we read about in the Bible. I mess it up on a regular basis. But God is there. God bless you. I hope you uh, are encouraged. Just remember, he's, he's not going to leave you. He's not going to give up on you. He's always going to be there. Why don't you why don't you join in with him today? Why don't we join in with him today? God bless.